Can you buy a note as easily as you can buy a case for your new iPhone 12 from Amazon? Stay tuned. Hello everyone, Joe Varnador here from Note School, and I want to welcome you to this week's episode of Note School TV. We have a special guest today, and we'll bring him on in just a minute, but we go live every Wednesday at 11.05 Central Time, and make sure that if you love the show, right, that you like, share, and subscribe, and make sure you hit that bell notification so that uh, there you will have a reminder as to when we are going live. Make sure also and send any, uh, share your questions and comments as we're going through this also. And you can always contact us at noteschool.com forward slash TV. So as I said, there is a lot of things happening in the world today. We all know that. The old Chinese philosopher said, may, we, may you live in interesting times. Well, it is certainly interesting times, right? So big news story for this week. So the big no news story for this week, the, uh, the uh, government-sponsored entities, which are GSEs, we call them, which are, which is Fannie, Freddie, Jenny, Fannie, uh, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and Jenny Mae have um, decided to extend the foreclosure moratorium from December 31st of 2020 They've extended it out to January 31st of 2020. And the story goes on to say um, that uh, that will affect about 28 million um, uh, homeowners in the United States. Not that there's 28 million people in a forbearance situation, but there are that many um, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and Jenny Mae uh, government insured or guaranteed loans. So, Jenny May uh, includes um, VA and FHA. So that is a breath of fresh air for some of those guys as well. We know uh, there's a lot of, a lot of things going on, right? So with that, now understand that only uh, applies to uh, the Fannie, Freddie, and Jenny loans. It does not apply to the uh, other loans that are through regular conventional lenders and so on. So just a big piece of news there. And um, again, that is good news for a lot of folks there. All right. And stay tuned for more of that. We'll have our news flash every week as we go through this. So as I said, we do have a special guest today. And this gentleman, his name is Dave, Mr. Dave Storton. And Dave uh, comes to us. He is from the San Francisco Bay Area. Why don't you bring on Dave and uh, let's talk just a few minutes. Hey, Joe, morning, how you doing? Sir. So um, Dave is a retired police detective from the Bay Area, right? Correct, yep. And I, if, I, if my memory serves me correct, uh, you uh, were, when you, when you, I guess when you retired, you did, uh, you were doing, you were doing financial uh, fraud and things like that, right? Yeah, that was in the financial crimes unit. I was actually the commander of financial crimes unit. Wow, that's a big job, dude. I didn't know you were the big the big it, wheel. It was a handful. Yeah, it was a handful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure a lot of things. Uh, I'm sure you've got a lot of great stories to tell, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> One of these days, we'll get to sit back down alive in person again and and share more of those stories, right? Dave? Yeah, that would be nice. I'm looking yeah, forward to next, be next year. And, uh, Looking forward to next year in Dallas to sit down and have breakfast with you or something. Absolutely. So, Dave, you uh, when you when you came into note school, you were you, you you do a lot of other things, right? You have you know I think you and I have talked about this, and you do defensive driving courses all over the United States, right? Yeah, I do uh, specialized driving courses. Actually, I teach uh, off road driving to search and rescue personnel, fire departments, etc., and and some civilian classes as well. 
There, that's, my, knows, that's my fun business. That's your fun. So you Not really, that notes aren't fun, but that's my fun business. <laughs> <laughs> well, so one of these days, I live in a little town in South Florida. As you, some of you guys have heard me say, a little town called Okeechobee. And uh, the Sebring Raceway is about... Less than about 45 minutes from where I live. So one day Dave's going to do something over there and uh, I'm going to go over and uh, and help him out. Yeah, we'll have to get some video of that because uh, there I'm, I teach uh, protection driving. So how, how to protect dignitaries and also some motion picture stunt driving school there as well. Well, even after being married 28 years and my wife riding around with me for a long time, uh, <laughs> because I can use all the help I can get. <laughs> <laughs> So, but you were, you were looking for something that, that was going to be passive for you, a little bit active, but you were re right. you really liked that this was kind of a means to an end, right? You wanted to continue to build wealth. You live in an area that has a lot of great investors out there that, that what private investors, I should say, right? That right. want to invest and they totally want to do nothing, right? They totally want to be passive. Yeah, it's really interesting in that because my peer group is now re retiring from uh, from law enforcement, and they they are bailing out of California for reasons we won't get into here. <laughs> but because they're selling real estate, they're buying in other places out of state, and they have cash on hand that they want to invest, but they don't like the the roller coaster of the uh, the stock market, and because it's just a certain the, the this time in their life they want cash flow. They don't want to. They're not trying to grow an IRA to retire later. They're retired now. They want cash flow now. And so I'm able to offer that to them. Well, and, you know, it. Uh, we were looking at some stats the other day, Dave, and uh, the last time, you know, back during the Great Recession, which sounds like, you know, it was 100 years ago, but it was 10 years ago, right, or, or 12 yeah. years ago, um, that there was a record set back then of about $3.8 trillion that it that at one time was sitting just in money market accounts, right? Which means it was doing nothing, you know, well, you know what I mean, about less than a percent, you know, in, in return. And so that was like at 3.8 trillion. Today, there is almost 5 trillion, like at three or five, 4.8 or $9 trillion sitting dry inside of uh, uh, money market accounts. And then all of the the pile of cash that is sitting over in self-directed IRAs that is sitting in dry cash, right? Um, they say that number is somewhere between 55 and $75 billion sitting in dry cash in IRAs. So we talk about, you know, working with burnout landlords. We call them bulls, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and so on. And that private capital that's out there, it's a thing, right? We had a, uh, you had a deal last year with your first deal, right? That uh, I think you used 100% private investment money, didn't you? The non-performing note you did in New Jersey. Yeah, my, my first, uh, I kind of challenged myself on it, Joe, in that, you know, you keep hearing people say, well, you can use other people's money. You don't need to use any of my, any of your own. So I had some of my own to invest, but I thought, okay, let's see if I can actually do that. So I jumped uh, into the deep end with a non-performing note with not a dime of my own money in it. Yeah. And I had set a goal for myself after going to Note Expo to get into the deal contest and at least be a finalist. And, uh, and I was a finalist that year. I didn't win the whole thing, but, you know, just to be a finalist was pretty cool. Yeah, three out of, uh, out of many is, uh, is, is pretty darn impressive. So, yeah, so Dave, uh, his story goes that he uh, attended, uh, well, he became a note school student late in the summer of 2018. Right. Um, he was getting his feet wet with the with the business and doing, you know, kind of studying up. And then he jumps in and goes to Note Expo in the fall of in November of 2018. And he saw all these folks getting up on stage, getting their awards and so on. And Dave, what did you decide you were going to do at that point? Well, I set that as a goal for myself. So what I tell my kids who are now in college or graduated college now is uh, if you do not write down your goals, it's a wish. Yeah. So I created a, a mouse pad and on the mouse pad, in fact, I have my mouse pad right here. So on my mouse pad, <laughs> I wrote on the top of it, Note Expo, and uh, I put on deal, deal finalist. And... Uh, I remember I showed that to you that day you did. You <laughs> and uh, did. I gave you yeah. goosebumps, I think, but that, you know, it's, yeah, it uh, you know, I didn't know I'd, I'd make it, but I was going to give it my best shot. And yeah. so well, yeah, that was in what, 
2018, November 2018, Dave right. says, I'm going to be up on stage with a deal. He had not done his first deal at that point. Right. November 2019, boom, you were there. And uh, we had to go virtual with uh, with Node Expo this year, the appreciation event in Node Expo. Mm -hmm. But I still enjoyed it. It was it was good. I like it in person was, better, but darn I, good. Yeah, I was. And you were, my, you were a finalist be, again, right? I was. To be honest, my expectations were low for the virtual event, but man, I really had a good time and enjoyed it. Yeah. Well, you know what? It's it's what is what is the old saying? Always a bridesmaid, never a bride, right? So uh, <laughs> anyway, so let's talk a little bit, and we go back to the teaser that I gave at the beginning of this. So, can you really buy a great performing note um, from Notes Direct, which is our our note platform, right? Um, right? As easily as you can buy a case for your cell phone from Amazon. And really, the answer to that, Dave, is, you know, yes, right? Correct. Yeah. You, it's just like if you're going to buy a product on, on Amazon, you go look at all the reviews and then you talk to your friends and, <laughs> you know, you, you Google it. It, it. It's kind of the same thing with a note. You're just doing underwriting right. and you're doing all the background work for it. And you actually even... This year, I, I learned, and I don't have his name in front of me, but you, there are people out there that will help you with the underwriting if you need that. Right. And uh, you, you just do your research on it. And, you know, I guess it's a little different, especially on my first one, because I'm, uh, I'm, I'm hovering over a button that, you know, is 40-some thousand dollars, you know, with sweaty fingers. Do I click it? <laughs> but that's, that's kind of what I like about Notes Direct is – Okay, I click it. If there's something just egregiously wrong in the in the underwriting, well, you, the notes direct people are are there, and you know they'll they'll help you work through it. That's right. Well, and we'll talk a little bit more at the end of this about how to you know how to mm -hmm. how to get to notes direct and so on. So let's uh, we've got a picture of the house here and uh, some details. So let's just talk about uh, what that looks like, right? So here's the house. Now, by the way, folks. We said Dave lives in the San Francisco Bay area, right? right. Is that anywhere close to Ridgely, <laughs> Tennessee? It is not. For if anyone's <laughs> geographically challenged, it is not close. <laughs> and just to be clear, this go, is not this is not the non-performer. And look at this house, Dave. Yeah. The, well, this is not the non-performer I bought the first one. This was right, actually exactly. a performing a performing note that I bought. Right. That had had started having issues. So. Right. Yeah. Well, you know the great the great thing about about the note space is that you know you, you're the bank right so you bought a note that uh, on a house in in Ridgely Tennessee you know it's a three bedroom one bath house uh, and it's got a current value of fifty five thousand dollars now it's a nice looking little house guys um, and I know you know if, if for those of you that live in California or live in some of those higher priced areas, you go, oh my God, I can't get a parking space for that much, right? But that's just <laughs> kind of the way it is. That's true. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about Dave, a little bit about the details of this note, right? What did it What did it look like then um, when you when you bought this? Okay, so the note, uh, the house is worth fifty five thousand, right? Right. And uh, the balance on the loan was uh, forty three thousand two hundred and fifty dollars. The right. interest rate on this is 10 percent. Now, some some folks are going, oh, 10 percent. That's a little bit high. Guys, this is a lower price band asset. And that is appropriate for a note of this size. Right. And so it says the term is two hundred and fifty months. So, Dave, this was what was the original term on this loan? The, uh, this actually was the original term uh, before I modified it. Right. But what I'm saying is this lady had owned this house a long time, right? This was a 360 month loan. Right. And there's, yeah, 250 months left on it when I bought it. So let me make sure everybody gets that. So guys, this loan, the, uh, the borrower owes 250 payments after having made 110 payments. So she's owned this house for what, uh, Nine years. Right. So nine years. So, and she's got a bit of equity in it. She's got about 10, a little over $10,000 in equity, in cash equity. But here's the thing. She's got uh, nine years of emotional equity in this house, right? 
Yeah, so, if you look at the picture, Joe, that that the picture on the first slide that you brought up. Yep. Uh, th that's one of the things that told me she's got emotional equity in it. Because if you look at that yard, it's nice. There's flowers on the mailbox. That's somebody that cares about the, about their their house. Isn't that some? Uh, you know, I bought a note once in Memphis, and I didn't even go in. It was a it was a performing note, and they it was the yard was and it was an older house, right? But the yard was immaculate. The hedge <laughs> was totally trimmed. The sidewalks were totally edged, man. And I'm a little anal about you know my yard and stuff like that. And I go, look at that. That's I don't need to see anything else, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's the emotional equity there. So you go through this and we'll go back to the next uh, screen there. And so and so the monthly payment is $412. So basically, Dave, what you're buying is you were buying the rights to receive the note, right? You're buying the rights to receive four, uh, 250 payments at $412, right? right? And so... That being, and you bought this note, right, from Notes Direct. Notes was traded at a discount, folks. So Dave buys this note um, for $34,250, right? So he buys it at an $8,000 discount. So that makes your, I didn't figure what your yield on that is, but it's somewhere in the 12, 13% range, I would assume. Yeah, I don't have that in front of me, but yeah, I don't it's have it in front of me, but yeah. So yeah. it's up there. So then you uh, let's kind of look at some redeeming factors on this. So you buy this for thirty uh, for uh, thirty four thousand dollars. The balance is forty three two fifty. So again, the borrower had paid one hundred and ten payments of four twelve. Right. So there's two hundred and fifty payments uh, remaining. So you buy this, and did you buy this in your IRA, or did you just buy it outside of your IRA? Bought it outside of the, uh, my IRA with none of my own money. <laughs> that was my next question. So you <laughs> actually used all investor money on this. So you right. borrowed some some uh, inexpensive. Uh, and, and I'm going to guess that you paid somewhere. Your your uh, private lender was paying you some. You were paying somewhere between 6 and 7%. Yeah, around a little over 7, actually. Because these are the guys I use are friends of mine. I've known them for a long time. So I was... I was a little bit generous with them. So you're giving them a little extra <laughs> juice out yeah. of the lemon, right? <laughs> right, right, right. Okay, so so you're buying this 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 cash flow, right? And so you buy it, and let's let's look at the deal points on this. So you buy it back in December of two night of 2019, and mm -hmm. everything is all good, right? <laughs> yeah, there was had a good payment, payment history, and so everything was fine for three months. And so then we had, well, we had a challenge, didn't we? I, I, some of you have heard of it. It was a pandemic. I think it's, you know, it's called COVID. And this lady's life kind of, after living in that house and owning that house for nine years, she had a lot of things happen to her, right? I think, you know, so we had the COVID thing. There was a divorce. There was a, a, a challenge with her daughter. So there was some really, she, it, it was kind of just dumped on her all at once. Right, Dave? Right. Yeah, I actually spoke to her directly and and heard her story, and she just had some horrific stuff going on in her life. Right, and guys, here's the thing. And Dave, you you chose to to speak to her, which is a good thing because you wanted to find out what was going on. But just understand that that um, guys, you don't have to do that. There are default servicers out there that can work with you, or that can work with your client, your your borrower for you. And, and I'm sure you went through the process with that as well. Yeah, I had a servicing company and they said they would, they could work through it. Uh, but, uh, you know, without getting too much information on my bar, we had something in common in our backgrounds. Right. So, so I told the servicer, look, I'd like to talk to this lady directly uh, because, good. you know, we have something in common. So uh, I spoke to her directly and, and that actually worked out very well. So she, so she missed the repayments and you, you know, one of the things I love about this business is that folks like, you know, you, myself and all these other pile of note school students that are out there, we can affect people's lives in a positive way in that you were able to not have to go through a bunch of red tape. Right. Because you're the you're the bank. Right. You're right. You're the DS National Bank, the Dave Storton National Bank. So <laughs> you were able to make a decision and very quickly decide that I, I really want to help this lady. And that's what it's all about. 
you didn't yeah, want we, this lady's house. You wanted to help right. her, and she and she was willing to to go along with that as well. Yeah, we. It, she developed some trust with me, just you know, because we spoke and and you know, I told her a little bit about me and you know what our commonality was and why I wanted to talk to her directly. Yeah. And uh, so she trusted me, and uh, she, we actually went over in detail her budget and what she could afford. And, uh, and that's, that was my starting point on how I could modify this thing. Right. So here's what the modification looked like, right? You, um, her uh, balance before was, I'm um, looking at my notes here, 43,250. Right. So you drop the balance down to $40,000. Right. You drop the interest rate from 10% down to 9%. Um, you extended the term a little bit, right? She owed two, she had 250 payments remaining. So you just extended the term by 50 months. So it was $300 uh, or 300 months. And then that drop, the, uh, the payment, the monthly payment, what about 56, six, about $68 a month, which may not sound like a lot to a lot of folks, but you know, it is right. Yeah, it was significant to her. And the way I came up with those numbers is we backed into it, as, as Eddie says, right. as I went from, okay, what's your budget? You know, she, she needed something under 350 for sure. Right. And so I just, I just backed into those numbers trying to get it under 350 and it, and it worked out. And, and again, it just, you know, that's the thing I love about this. So Dave, once you did that, right. You use some of that note school magic that you that you uh, learned, right? That that, uh, and so let's look at what you decided to do after you um, after you uh, modified this loan. So you went in and you decided that, and and there's something so you can buy a loan, guys. And in this case, there's 300 payments left. So Dave decided that he was going to sell the front end piece of those payments. And uh, you decided to sell 180 of that 300 payment payment stream, right? Right, so, I, I had a, I already had a, a partial buyer that he was already looking to buy a partial from me. So I was, uh, I was already on the hunt for a note I could partial when this occurred. And I thought, hey, I could partial this one. Right. So it's perfect, right? So you, uh, you, you present this to your partial buyer, your partial buyer, you said, look, you invest $39,000, you get 180 payments of $344 a month, your, uh, your investor's rate of return is 6.7%, which I'm sure that he or she was just totally ecstatic with, right? Yeah, uh, he was completely happy with that because he even said, I'm getting 2%. The money's getting there 2% if that sitting right. in a bank account. Exactly. So, and he's, you know, the, the house is worth 55. So there's plenty of equity in the thing, you know, between what it is. So Dave, you sell a partial, right? Those right. 180 payments. And guys, we say at note school all the time, it's your chalk and your chalkboard, right? And so Dave just decided how much he wanted to sell. Right. So he figured up a rate of return for his investor and then he just carved off a piece of those payments to sell. And so what that did is that allowed you to bring thirty nine thousand dollars back into your business. Right. <laughs> Excuse me, guys. Sorry, <laughs> allergies this morning. So that you so we call that also the capital recoupment plan. Right. So all you're doing is re uh, recouping some investment back into your bank. And then you owe uh, or you own 120 payments on the back end of that of 300 right. uh, of 344 dollars a month. So your we always joke around, right? So what's Dave's, <laughs> uh, what's his rate of return, guys? It's very high, right? <laughs> so let's look at the numbers here, Dave, as we wrap this up. So you had all in, right? You had the note cost of uh, thirty four two thirty, I believe, is what it was thirty four two fifty, right? And then when you modified it, you had some cost in that. So your right. all in cost on this was thirty four eight ninety five, right? So you received three payments from your borrower, uh, December, January, February, and those payments total twelve hundred and thirty six dollars. And then it must have been what about April or May that you modified this, right? And you sold 180 payments for 39,000 bucks. And when you sold those payments for 39,000 bucks, 
Now, if we go back and look at those numbers, you've gotten every dime of your money back, right? You've gotten 39,000 plus the 12. So you've gotten back a little over $40,000 in monthly payments or in, in cash. In cash, right. But Dave, you still own what? I still own the back end of the note <laughs> with zero money in it. And you know what's funny, Joe, is I I just hired a new bookkeeper because my last bookkeeper, bookkeeper couldn't figure out what the heck I was doing. <laughs> and I, I just I had just talked to the new bookkeeper yesterday, and she said, I've never seen anything like this. You're going to have to teach me how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, guess what? You've got another uh, you've got another passive investor, right, Dave? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That is, so that's just just to just so that it, it everybody gets that, right? So Dave has his original purchase, then he has to modify it. So he receives those three payments, he modifies the loan, he sells a partial. So Dave, you've got you've collected about 40 a little over forty thousand dollars. So you you've made five thousand dollars in today money, kind of over a few months, right? Correct, yeah. And then you have the back end, you've sold 15 years of payment. So once your partial investor has received their 180 payments, it automatically reverts back to you and you're going to receive the uh, remaining 120 payments. Now it could pay off early, right? And that's okay. Right. Um, it could, uh, uh, or they could continue to pay it. She could continue you know, to be in at 300 more months. So anyway, so your total profit is forty six thousand dollars on a thirty five thousand dollar investment, right? Yeah, that's not bad. But you have nothing <laughs> invested in those hundred and twenty payments. Yeah, that's what got the bookkeeper's attention. She said, "I'm trying to do the numbers on this. You don't have any money in this, and you're going to start collecting payments." I said, "Yeah." <laughs> she said, "Well, I want to do that." <laughs> Mr. Short, you're actually five thousand five thousand dollars ahead of the game, and then anyway. Hey guys, that's the note space, and and that's why we uh, that's why we absolutely love this business. It's just it's just an amazing thing to go in and do that. So you not only it's something where you can you can profit and prosper, and you can help folks. And I love to say we can help people one 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 house at a time in the U.S. We can go out and do that without getting all corny and all that on that. Right? I just I have a real strong opinion about about us being able to do that. So Dave, we I appreciate who you are. I appreciate you know your your you know your integrity in the business and and helping folks uh, in the business and just you know a lot of folks can say well let me just foreclose on this thing right but that wasn't the game on this right this the game on this was the long play right so right. money today and money tomorrow and, and we teach that over and over and over yeah and and I told you about this one just in passing. When you yeah, said, you hey, you got, you, got to, you got to put this in the contest. And I hadn't considered that because I hadn't written, I hadn't really thought about the contest for this year. Right. right, so, well, right. I, sure. Okay. So, and, and All right. So, <laughs> Dave, I appreciate you being on. Um, and again, thanks so much. Happy holidays. And you too, uh, stick around. We'll talk after the show. So guys, if you want to, um, learn more about the about buying a note, you can certainly go to notesdirect.com, notesdirect.com, or you can uh, check us out. Uh, I'll go check out Feeding Frenzy Friday. Every week, uh, Brian Lochner and Scott Tyler have a five-minute quick show. Go to the Note School TV uh, channel at YouTube and check out Note School TV on the Feeding Frenzy Friday um, great notes, notes just like this that you can find on there and uh, you can make those your own. So guys, again, thanks so much. Do check out Feeding Frenzy Friday. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, we go live every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Central Time. Remember to learn more about Note School and the note space. Uh, go to noteschool.com forward slash TV. And uh, guys, have a great afternoon, and we will see you next week live at 11 a.m. on Note School TV. Have a great week. Mm -hmm.